हेलो फ्रेंड्स और माय वीडियोस ऑन द आउटकम ऑफ ट्रांसुतर सेक्शन इन माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई टॉक टू यू ऑफ अ सिनेरियो वेयर पेशेंट फेल्स टू अवॉइड कंप्लीटली एंड गोज इन अ स्टेट ऑफ यून रिटेंशन इन दिस वीडियो आई एम टॉकिंग टू यू ऑफ अ स्लाइटली डिफरेंट सिनेरियो वेयर after the catheter removal patient started voiding urine but he continues to have obstructive low urinary tract symptoms and he is not very happy about the outcome so this situation is called as persistent obstructive low urinary tract symptoms after a transurethral section of the prostate why this happens is important to understand one group of factors can be bladder related where the dominant reason is under activity of the detrusor muscle a weak detrusor muscle the second reason is related to prostate where either there is some degree of residual prostate or the patient has bled in the prostatic fossa and there are blood clots in the prostatic fossa as well as in the lumen of urinary bladder which are obstructing so you can have either a bladder related reason for persistent slow stream or you can have a prostate related reason in some patients you have both so management becomes a little more tricky but for the sake of understanding let us study them separately talking first about the underactive detrusor how will you diagnose this problem in this kind of situation where patient is having uh, unsatisfactory stream and he has other obstructive symptoms also so how will you diagnose this problem here and secondly how will you treat this problem first of all let me tell you that in which group of patients you should suspect underactive detrusor this i mean uh, in a pre operative situation all experienced resectionist can pick up that this patient will not void well after transurethral resection and there are two categories of patients here one category is the one who has been living with a large post void residual urinary volume something more than 250 cc if his pvru is this much of course he is in a state of decompensated bladder out obstruction and his detrusor muscle is not having good contraction the common clinical scenario where you have a large pvru in urinary bladder is a patient who has chronic urinary retention and he has not gone to state of dilated upper urinary tract some diabetics who have cystopathy or somebody who has a large bladder diverticulum and then there are some patients who are on long term antipsychotic medications so all these patients develop a weak detrusor muscle because of which they show up large pvru so one category would be somebody who has a large pvru and second category will be a patient who has no issues with pvru but as such he is living with a large urinary bladder and he has thin walled urinary bladder these are the patients like somebody who is very old more than 80 years of age there are some people who are who have been habitual water drinker for long time many many years like alcoholics they retain large amount of urine in their bladder so the bladder becomes very big there are some people who are compulsive retainers of urine in their bladder so all these have large urinary bladder and thin urinary bladder and they may not have sufficient detrusor pressure so if you have either of these categories of the patient in preoperative period you should actually suspect 
the patient may be having underactive detrusor and such patients who who might call high risk individuals for a unsatisfactory outcome after transurethral resection you should identify all these patients preoperatively rather than facing the issue afterwards and be liberal with the use of urodynamic evaluation to diagnose that was underactivity mm -hmm. and my feeling is that these patients should be offered a period of preoperative intermittent cell catheterization or if they cannot do it a preoperative indwelling catheterization i personally prefer plain intermittent catheterization and i not only train the patient but i also train the caregivers so that if in the post operative period such a situation arises that patient is not able to void well he can continue his clean intermittent catheterization and i have noted in my experience that many patients gradually gradually start voiding normally or reasonably so this clean intermittent catheter before turp and after turp is a good way to go about so suppose you did not suspect underactivity bladder or else somebody else has operated the patient and patient has come to you after he did not void well after turp he has come to you for second opinion in that kind of scenario how do you diagnose this problem for diagnosis you need a uroflow test which will show you a low flow state an ultrasound which will show you high post void residual urinary volume a urodynamic study which will show you a low pressure voiding and also a voiding cystogram or mcu which will show you a normal outlet because you have done a good transurethral resection but still large pvru in the bladder so you use these four tests to diagnose this clinical problem the uroflometry in these patients looks something like this the patient is voiding intermittently he is voiding in small spurts with abdominal straining so bit by bit he voids and tries to empty himself when you do a pressure flow study you will get this kind of curve where the pdat maximum is below you know 10 15 or something like that and his flow is not good so it's a low pressure low flow diagnosis if patient has undergone a cystogram it will show you smooth bladder large bladder like that and when he voids his bladder neck is open prostatic cavity is open the contrast is flowing down the urethra nicely there's no stricture in the urethra anywhere meatus is fine but you will find as if he's trying to strain to void and then at the end of voiding he will be left behind with significant post void just a urinary volume so such is the standard mcu of underactive bladder some patients can have a picture like this where in filling cystogram you discover a kind of a diverticulum i hope you can make out that there is a small shadow behind the bladder shadow if i outline with the red that's here it is and if you take a lateral picture the big diverticulum is hidden behind the urinary bladder Now these patients will not void after transurethral resection because voiding pressure will get dissipated into the diverticular cavity. So the underactive detrusor, having diagnosed that, how do you treat? Diverticulum, of course, will require a surgical correction. But in general, you have to give these patients. some kind of psychotherapy you reassure the patient because patient gets very frustrated he has suffered a long period of symptoms before turp and after a turp also he continues to have same symptoms so he is very frustrated you have to rebuild his confidence so psychotherapy is very essential you can ask him to do clean intermittent cell catheter as i said in the beginning so you tell the patient that this is a physiotherapy of urinary bladder you are making bladder to empty itself at least four times a day and that is what a normal human being does void four times in a day so the bladder is made to empty four times in a day and in between it is allowed to gradually gradually refill so it's a kind of physiotherapy for urinary bladder and due course of time you may improve some patients do improve 
in postoperative period. Then you can give them some kind of pharmacotherapy and this is a very questionable area that whether the drugs work, whether the bethanacol works in this situation or not. But uh, uh, literature may speak to you otherwise that it does not work well and randomized trials do not show the bethanacol is useful. But if you ask my personal opinion, I have found this useful in some patients and difficult to predict which patient will respond, which patient will not respond probably because of his in, innate, you know, metabolism and drug clearance issues. Some patients respond, some do not. Uh, we have used in past in some patients metoclopramide also. This drug also works on detrusive muscle by dopaminergic pathways. Then all of these patients must have a clear bowel. If they are constipated, they will not void well. So please manage their constipations. So you look into these four areas, give him psychotherapy, physiotherapy of urinary bladder, pharmacotherapy to augment contraction of detrusa and bowel therapy to clear constipation. If you pay attention to all these four areas, the patient will improve. And finally, the prostate factor. You have taken care of underactivity or underactivity was not there at all. But there is a prostate factor. How do you diagnose the prostate factors? And how do you treat this prostate factor? So as I said that some patients have blood clots. You remove the catheter and patient is having mild hematuria and he is trained to void and he bled little more and the clots accumulated in the prostatic cavity. Some of them came in the bladder lumen and they are causing him obstruction and voiding. Ultrasound will show you the blood clots and this situation is kind of an emergency situation. So I would suggest that you take the patient to OT and do emergency cystoscopic clot removal, then only patient will start voiding. Now of course you take care of the reason why did he bleed. So blood clots is a kind of emergency semi-emergency situation. But if patient is voiding and he is not having hematuria, then the second reason would be again a residual prostate. Now when do you suspect residual prostate? You should suspect if, if you don't think that there is an underactivity of the urinary bladder and you are not able to find out any other cause. And if on digital electrical examination some prostate is felt particularly towards apex or on transrectal examination some prostate is seen particularly towards the apex, then then this is a case of a residual prostate responsible for persistent blood outflow obstruction. And you can diagnose this by a pressure flow study which will show a high PDAT. Say this is the normal prostate anatomy. You can have various patterns of residual prostate. The most common pattern is this where you have done a resection more towards bladder neck and then it has made the prostate free some apical tissue is left and as the patient voids, this free prostate falls ahead of the urinary stream and patient is not able to void. This is the most common pattern. But you can have this kind of pattern also. We have done in the resection all along the prostate and lateral lobes have been left behind. Or another pattern where in one lobe you have significant apical tissue and the other lobe you have most of the prostate tissue. This happens when the operator encounters excessive bleeding from sinus somewhere and he has to stop it. Here's one example of a patient who was not voiding well after a transuthal resection of a very large prostate, 80 for am or so. Now this is a retrograde euthogram which shows you the contrast going in the prostatic cavity and also in the bladder. The urethra is all right. And in the cystogram, you notice that some contrast is filled in the large prostatic cavity in the upper part of the prostatic cavity. In the lateral view, when patient voids and you shoot the film, you will notice that prostatic cavity is filling up. Some contrast is trickling down in the urethra, so it's voiding in a poor stream. And if you see anteriorly uh, in this part where arrows are coming up, there's some bulge here. This is the bulge of residual prostate. Now, when this patient strained further, he voided. But I would like you to see here that 
the contrast is, is going into seminal vesicles contrast is going into both vas deferens and contrast is going even up to epididymis so the prostatic cavity is so widely open the ejaculatory ducts have become refluxing that's why you are able to see seminal vesicles and both vasa and both epididymis and this is the post void cystogram and again you can see both nice vas deferens and and epididymis if you see here that is where is the residual prostate so a good voiding study will diagnose residual prostate has a either example of a patient who is having a residual apical prostate following transurethral resection and he is not able to void satisfactorily so if you have prostatic factors how to treat so obviously a residual prostate you have to if it is a apical tissue you have to redo the transurethral resection but if it is the lateral lobe or tissue there have been some some clinical situations where patients have been given a combination therapy of alpha blockers and dutasteride therapy although this is very very debatable but i have myself used it it works in some patients a patient takes it for 3 to 6 months some people become all right so that is how you manage the patient of persistent obstructive low urinary symptoms after a transurethral resection i hope you have understood these common situations and this will help you in your clinical practice thank you very much if you have any questions about this please write to me on my email drdalila24@gmail.com thank you